Hey, hey guys, Vlad here with AVT Astro, and it's kind of hard to hide. Today we're doing a pretty special comparison, that is comparing the Mead 12-inch Advanced Coma Free against the 7-inch Mead 170-80D on the planets uh, Jupiter and Saturn are going to be out tonight, so we're look, really looking forward to it. It's looking like a beautiful night out here. I'm going to be doing some uh, primary planetary observing, uh, maybe do a little bit of deep, deep sky objects. For those of you guys not familiar, I run a little astro blog called avt-astro.com and of course this YouTube channel, so if you're not subscribed, please do consider subscribing. Um, over the years, I've owned over 100 scopes. Uh, these particular ones, you know, I've actually had for a number of years. I haven't actually directly compared them uh, side by side because this guy typically sits in my observatory, right? Uh, which I was currently moving from my old house to the new house. Um, so I'm really looking forward to doing this comparison. We're going to do a little bit of visual observing. I'll give you my thoughts on the you know performance of the scope side by side using the same IP, same diagonal. Um, and then we're going to uh, hopefully you know uh, do a little bit of uh, astrophotography on the planets with these guys and see what kind of images we can come up with. So let's get to it. Alrighty guys, it is nighttime. Got both the scopes pointed at Jupiter already. Um, so I've been doing some observing already. Got the batter zoom going on. Talk about a little bit about the equipment. So batter zoom. I've got the batter uh, prism diagonal. And I'm using this eyepiece and that diagonal between both these scopes. Now these scopes are kind of cool in the sense, um, as far as the focal length goes. Um, that one, the Mead uh, 1780D, the refractor, that's a 1600 focal length. The 12 inch uh, Mead uh, Advanced Coma Free is about 3200 millimeters. So basically all I gotta do is just set the batter zoom right to um, uh, essentially like you know half the focal length when I'm using the SCT compared to the S scope and I basically get the same magnification so that makes it pretty simple <clears throat> so the eyepiece and the diagonal have nothing to do with this uh, both scopes are perfectly collimate I checked the collimation of the SCT uh, looks pretty darn good so um, I know um, yeah so today the scene is kind of a mixed blessing. <laughs> um, and you know, what do I mean by that? Um, at times it's really, really bad, but at times it's actually pretty, you know, pretty good. You know, and like not perfect, but pretty good actually. Um, and you know, why do I say that's a mixed blessing? Well, because basically it gives me the chance to compare both these guys, right? And seeing, you know, the, you know, typically people have that's not very good and actually in pretty decent scene. Um, so basically, you know, kind of, I've already been out here observing for about an hour, you know, kind of switching from scope to scope. And I've observed both Jupiter and Saturn. So I wanted to, you know, kind of give you some feedback and, you know, on what I'm seeing so far. Um, essentially, um, the image brightness is plenty bright enough between both of these scopes um, it's almost kind of too bright on the 12 inch uh, but it depends on the power that you're using so when I um, when I'm using um, the 16 millimeter setting or you know like uh, higher powers above that the you know the brightness is you know pretty acceptable and you can dim it down with like a polarizing filter too if you know if the brightness is kind of you know bothering you um, the other really obvious difference between the scopes, just kind of like right off the bat, is that the larger scope it does show more colors, and especially in Jupiter, like the bands, you know, um, and even the regions between the bands, uh, they just show a lot more color, you know, it's just a lot more vivid color. Now, interestingly enough, um, there, it's not the great red spot, but there's another little storm going on between um, a couple of the bands uh, on Jupiter right now. And um, actually, the refractor, right, the Mead 178, it is actually showing that one a little bit better. Um, so it's kind of telling me that uh, the contrast is probably a little bit better on the 178D. Um, so that is showing up better. Otherwise, you know, just overall, um, you know, kind of when the scene is better, um, 
I'm really seeing a similar amount of detail, like, you know, the same amount of uh, belts in that type of deal. Um, I think the moons are a little bit more distinct than the Mida CT. Uh, they just kind of look a little bit more like, you know, like actual orbs, right? Uh, so the resolution is definitely better with that scope. Um, again, if the scene, you know, if you live in one of those areas, um, and, uh, you know, you're very lucky if you do, <laughs> but if you live in one of those areas where the scene is really good, you know, night to night, um, and you have a good sample of an SCT, uh, the larger scope will show you more. Now, interestingly enough, you know, again, I kind of talked that today the scene is a little bit variable. Um, I, I will kind of, you know, point out one little secret to you guys, okay? And if you guys have friends that own a Takahashi, you know, just, just kind of keep it to yourself, don't tell them. <laughs> okay? Yeah, I'm joking. If you own a Takahashi, you know, that's cool. <laughs> They're cool scopes, but anyhow, yesterday I had my uh, TAC FS-128 out, right, and I was looking at, you know, both Jupiter and Saturn, and yesterday the scene was just consistently better. It wasn't like perfectly, but it was just consistently better than tonight, and quite frankly, um, I probably saw more detail yesterday with the 5-inch TAC compared to both of these scopes tonight. Um, and, you know, I know all the TAC fanboys are like, oh my god, of course I knew it. my scope is better than anything, you know, than all these me trash out there. Um, TACs are good, um, but uh, really, I guess the moral of the story isn't that, you know, TAC harshes are really good, it's that the scene, you know, has a lot to do with what you can see. I am using the Saibon SV-105, um, you know, check out my review of this thing. To capture the planets, uh, or actually just to capture Jupiter, um, I'm using a 2x Barlow with the refractor. I am not going to use a Barlow with the SCT. With that guy, I'm just going to go, you know, basically at prime focus. So, yeah, I'm going to do a capture of 2,000 frames on each uh, scope because my mounts aren't very well polar aligned and. Uh, I don't think I could get more than 2,000 frames without this thing uh, moving out of the field of view because, you know, you, you got to keep in mind I am at a focal length of over 3,000 millimeters with both these scopes. So, um, yeah, so not an ideal night for imaging for sure. Um, but uh, hopefully, you know, I'll probably do a couple of captures with each scope and hopefully, you know, we could get a you know, half decent looking image of both of these. So you guys can kind of get a more of a representation of what I've seen visually. And um, after I process this, um, I'll show you kind of the results and we'll kind of talk about what the conclusion is. All right guys, so let's kind of conclude this and bring this trip home. So what did I think, uh, you know, when I was comparing my 7-inch APO to the 12-inch SCT? Um, you know, overall, in the scene that we had last night, um, I would say that the view, just, you know, bare-bone comparison was more similar than different. Um, now, as I kind of mentioned, the previous night I had my uh, FS-128 out, and by the way, all you tech fans, okay, so you don't go throwing rotten apples at me, you know, I'm a fanboy too, okay, uh, <laughs> but in any case, um, you know, like on that previous night, I'd say that the 5-inch scope probably showed like even more detail than what I saw. Uh, in the 7 and 12 inch SCT. With the exception there was one period of time to where the scene got pretty good and the 12 inch SCT was just really showing a lot of fine detail on Jupiter just for a few minutes though. So um, I guess you know the, the best way that I'll sum this up is uh, let's I'm gonna post the pictures that I took and as you could see um, you know, unfortunately, there isn't very much detail because when I was shooting these pictures, this was after I was done observing, the scene had kind of gone really bad. You could almost see it just like the same amount of detail. Actually, the image scale turned out to be a little bit larger as you can see with the 170D, but really there's not any like more detail in one image than the other, you know, realistically. Um, as you can see in the meat image, uh, one of the moons had kind of just transited the planet, so you kind of see that, so that's kind of cool. Uh, but overall, just a poor amount of detail. So, um, 
I guess, you know, the conclusion, the moral of the story of using these two scopes, which are pretty big high-end scopes, you know, obviously I've got, you know, a number of other pretty premium scopes, you know, I've got a, you know, a good amount of experience of visual observing, uh, to a certain degree of doing, you know, like astrophotography on the planets too, um, you know, the scene impacts what you see a lot more than what your scope uh, will impact. So if you have, you know, a somewhat decent quality scope, whether it doesn't have to be like a premium APO, like, you know, something like even like an AstroTech or something like that. Um, if you have a decent SCT that's not a total dog and you actually know how to collimate, and unfortunately a lot of people do not, um, watch my uh, collimation video, you know, if, if you haven't ever collimated your SCT, but I know, if you have a decent SCT, it's collimated um, and it's cooled down properly. You know, on most nights of seeing, you're probably seeing all there is to be seen. Um, unless you happen to, again, live in one of those areas that just consistently, night after night after night, just has really good seed, then yes, having those larger aperture scopes will be really beneficial. So anyhow, hopefully you guys found this video interesting. Um, if you guys have any questions, comments, you don't agree with me, Post them in the thing below. If you do agree with me, post them even more. <laughs> and if you're not subscribed, please do consider subscribing. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.